You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health podcast. I have Wei Shen Lai and Jason Wolf. They're co-founders of uh, Acoustic Sheep. Website is AcousticSheep.com uh, and Sleep Phones, S-L-E-E-P-P-H-O-N-E-S.com. So, guys, thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Happy to join you again. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, just full disclosure, I don't know. They, they, they were gracious and they sent me, uh, you know, a, a set of uh, Sleep Phones which I tried out, which uh, I thought were pretty cool and comfortable. So, um, yeah, just letting listeners know that. But it's a good thing because I've had some experience yeah. with the product now. But, uh, guys, thank you for coming again. That's what we like to hear. Our uh, key word is comfort. Yeah. Well, uh, one question, just, well, just jumping right in. Um, why not modify it so that, you know, it's a headband that has uh, earphones in it, you know, and you could wear it pretty comfortably and sleep. Why not make it so it also goes over your eyes? So it blocks out light and it puts the music in your ears and, uh, you know, you can sleep like that. I, I use a, a bootleg version of this with no music. Sometimes I'll put a sock over my eyes and it will cover <laughs> my ear too and muffle sound a little bit. But, but why not uh, maybe morph the product into something like that? Uh, yeah. So, so actually, we recommend people size down a little if they like to sleep with something over their eyes. Because what you can do then is just to, like, pull the, the headband down and it can cover your eyes. Okay. Okay. It does uh, double duty. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, you guys have been here before, but let's, you know, for someone that hasn't listened to the first podcast, wh- where did this device come from? Like, how did you uh, think about it and figure it out? And invent Not it? sleeping. Mm-hmm. So this was, uh, let's see, 12 years ago now, and I was a family doctor. And at night, I would be getting phone calls from patients, and then it would be hard for me to get back to sleep. And so uh, Jason here suggested that I should listen to some relaxing music, but I tried headphones and they're bulky and you can't sleep on your side and earbuds just dug into my ears too much. So he came home one night, um, brought some materials and we started sewing and soldering and then came up with this idea of putting thin speakers inside of a stretchy headband. And that's what worked. And, uh, you know, worked for me. And so we decided to make more because I figured, you know, there are lots of people out there, all like a ton of my patients were having sleeping problems. And um, so we made more and turns out it really took off. Pretty much universally. Everybody we, we showed it to liked it. So uh, it was a hit from the start. Yeah. Um, any, um, any outliers, you know, people whose heads get hot really easily or people that have like, you know, really big heads, uh, any, you know, with the same form factor, is it a one size fits all type thing or have you had to make different versions for different people? So initially, when we first started the business, uh, we soldered and sewed all of them uh, ourselves. And we were buying fabric from Joanne Fabrics and we bought like their fleece fabric. One of the great uh, uh, treasures of, of the world. <laughs> Economic <laughs> engine. <for> yeah. <laughs> So, um, it, you know, the, the fleece was uh, mediocre quality. Um, it didn't actually have any stretchy materials inside it, like Lycra or uh, spandex or anything along those lines. And so we ended up having to make five sizes. So we had everything from extra small to small to medium, you know, large and extra large. And so there was an inventory issue. That was, that was that. a handful, yeah. Yeah, but since then we have definitely upgraded our fabric to you know some of the the best fabric in the world, technical fabrics uh, made overseas, and this 
uh, has allowed us to go down to three sizes. Um, and the mm. medium size really fits, I, I think, 80, 90 percent of people. So, yes, absolutely. There are outliers, um, really petite, you know, even kids sometimes uh, like teenagers and stuff like that uh, or preteens uh, will wear the extra small size, perhaps, or the small size. Um, and then the uh, you know, large, beefy people will wear the large size there. Mm. It, it does any, happen, uh, but I think it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like most things, you know, it's like the 80-20 rule, like 80, 90 percent of people are served well by, you know, the one size fits all, but then there's always the people that need, uh, again, larger or smaller, but I'm glad you addressed Probably that. Probably closer to 90. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have you, have you thought about making it into like a hat, you know, that also goes over your ears? Is there anyone that gets cold and they want to make it like, you know, again, a hat as well? So, yeah, we thought about the sleep hat design. Um, and that was something that we had initially started making, but it, it did get a little bit too hot. And, you know, you're just not used mm -hmm. to wearing something on your head all night. Uh, so, you know, we don't wear those long uh, stockings and <laughs> we've had we've had a, a vast array of prototypes that we have decided against for whatever reason right yeah and then oh. this um and we actually uh tried different kinds of fabric and, and at this point uh some of our big sellers uh biggest sellers are the the thinnest fabric that we carry uh we call that mm. the breeze fabric um so mm. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't roll anything out for the future, but I'm, I'm still quite in love with the uh, the basic format, the original format. We have. Yeah, the fleece is is nice and soft. It's just really comfortable. Cannot be beat. Okay. So what's a uh, what's typical? Do you um do you have pre-programmed music? Let's say it goes for like 20 minutes. That's soothing to knock someone out and put them to sleep. Or do they use uh you know their phone and Bluetooth it in and put on whatever they want? Like what's a, a oh. good protocol to help people? All of the above. <laughs> yeah, everybody has their own preferences for what they like to help them sleep. So for me, I like to listen to somebody like telling me to have progressive muscle relaxation exercises and uh, to breathe in and breathe out, you know, like somebody telling me what to do. <laughs> I guess I'm type A or something. Um, and uh, and some people just like the, the fan noise or raindrops or ocean waves. Uh, white noise. White noise specifically. Yeah, I, stuff I like, like that. nature sounds, but, but lately it has been pretty much all podcasts or sometimes <laughs> audiobooks. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, and and so yeah, there, there's a wide variety, but I think you know one of the things that we wanted to to talk to you about today was uh, about our newest application. Uh, it's it's a really complex uh, artificial intelligence software uh, mm. that will actually deliver the best music ever. I think we we hinted at it last time, right? We have this 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 project to finally answer the question. You know, we we've, we've got the most comfortable uh, delivery mechanism for audio for particularly right. when you're at rest. And you know, we've seen just an amazing amount of different audio that's purported to help you with different things. And and our our, uh, our key concern has always been uh, sleep induction. It may not always be. We'll, we'll we'll do other things as well. But but right. you know, we asked. The question all this time of you know, what really is the best sound technology yeah what helps the most people sleep so you know so after we just kind of uh ruminating on this for for years you know we uh have uh, devised a uh, a system to help us find out with the help of our audience oh so you, are you tracking uh when people wear the headband how fast it takes them to fall asleep and you're trying different uh audio programs to see which one knocks them out the fastest so we've actually, we've, in a way, yeah, we've created a, a, a notional uh, artificial life form. We, we've, we we're using a genetic algorithms. We, we, we uh, created a genome which can be expressed as some combination or individually all of these different kinds of sounds that are purported for sleep. We, uh, we, we studied what everybody else was doing, and we looked at it as kind of folk wisdom or, or folklore, kind of like uh, when scientists look for for plants that, that might be drugs that do this or that for health, they, they, you know, they look at the folk wisdom of what plants help with what. And, and we looked at, you know, all the different things that were purported to help particularly people fall asleep. And we looked at all the speculation online and we, we created this, this genome that could uh, create this search space that would accommodate all these different ideas. And yeah, so we mapped 
different kinds of audio, like binaural beats. And then like, you know, within binaural beats, you can have different frequencies and, uh, and, and tones and stuff like that. And so then um, if you give all of those uh, variations uh, an allele, which is, you know, a, a specific instance of a gene. Um, so, so let's say the, the frequency 260 Hertz, you're mapping to this particular uh, allele that goes in the gene. And then, and then basically this genome can, can have hundreds of thousands of potential uh, variations, right? And, and so then we can um, uh, create a, I guess this artificial life form. We're calling it a sheep for obvious reasons. We're a we're, we're sheep. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so the, so we we t we take this um, all all of this genetic material and create the sheep, which is a, a soundtrack that has different layers of music, uh, and then you can listen to it. You can listen to our sheep and determine whether or not it really jumped over the fence and helped you sleep better. The upshot is that um, our our audience, our users are presented with an array of tracks each night, which, which are the expression of these notional uh, sheep. And they can listen to them. And if someone finds one that really helps them fall asleep, we hope that they will rate it highly. And that if enough people do rate a particular sheep highly, it's, it's deemed fit by the system and is given the opportunity to pass its genetic structure on, its, its, its structure onto the next generation. And with successive generations, we get better and better and better at achieving our purpose. So you're, you're having people essentially vote, and the ones that are the most popular are the ones that you're going to be showing more often to people. Is that what you're saying? Showing more often, but also actually the sheep can reproduce. So um, we'll take two sheep that were highly rated, and then we'll select various, you know, it would be random. They, uh, they each contribute their yeah, genetic they, they, material. Just just like parents do with their kid. Uh, <laughs> and then um, the, the kid uh, will be hopefully a better um a fitter it's it's survival of fitness yeah and the way we uh we measure fitness is how well it achieves its purpose but again i mean so i don't know i don't know one one final soundtrack composed of whatever variation may work for me or it may not i mean let's say like monday night my day was pretty uneventful and i worked out a lot and i'm tired and i just you know i fall asleep quick because of that you know, Wednesday, my wife bothered me all day and the kids are driving me crazy and I'm pissed off about this at work. And, you know, oh, my mind is going 100 miles an hour and it takes me a long time to fall asleep no matter what I listen to. But yet, how do you know that for everybody in every situation on every night that X will work best? I mean, it seems like it needs to be a really to be most effective. It needs to be a personalized thing with feedback from the person. Well, I mean, even as you just said that what works for you one night might not work the next. Well, we expect noise. You know, we have we expect outliers. Uh, the system uh, will tend to move toward better and better results over time, even with that. Because there'll be several, you know, people voting on these tracks um, and, you know, having a wide variety of feedback. Um, is going to hopefully produce the the best results, and absolutely, there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of noise. In, a, in aggregate, variation. Yeah. In aggregate, yeah. over time, we get what we what we're And and you know, um, we we've actually been in beta testing for a year with this, and uh, in, during the beta tests, we went down five generations, um, and mm. with in those five generations, we were already able to see some patterns emerging market improvement yes. yeah and it's it's really interesting to see you know some of these patterns uh, about the music itself uh emerge so you know i think this is this is potentially really promising and and yeah absolutely everybody's going to have different preferences um and uh eventually we're going to be able to uh hone in on uh different demographics uh different uh, medical conditions, perhaps, and be able to um, deliver the best music for that audience. Uh, but right now, uh, as we are kind of ramping up, we, we're just looking for a few ideals. You know, one of the one of the characteristics. It, of algorithms in order is that, to do that, in order to do that, you know, I, I understand. But why why not put like an accelerometer in the headband, and instead of me telling you what I like. The accelerometer says, hey, we may or, took a, yeah, we may or may not be able to discuss future products. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we well, sure, but I'm too. saying that that's another way to do it, you know, whether or not you do it in the future. But if you actually get parameters from the person, you know, they're, they're not even reporting it themselves. It's just the data is being collected and you're noticing like, you know, the, the there may not be one music I'm saying that works for everybody and even the same person at the same time under the same conditions. So it, it seems to me, and this is my opinion, that it's better to collect data from the person, you know, again, using a accelerometer or whatever you want to measure to brainwaves if possible to to see oh look this this music made them sleep 30 percent faster so we're going to just play that for them and they'll trust that you know they're being monitored and and whatever is being played for them is helping them most at that particular time and to me that just seems like you know i know your first so, stab at it is the voting which is great but it seems like that would be a, a lot more personalized and better eventually yeah so so i'll, I'll just tell you this uh that great minds think alike and uh, I, I do not want to discuss potential future products yet. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so one, of, one of the characteristics of uh, genetic algorithms is that you're not really looking for one perfect end result. You're looking for improved results over time. And I don't think there's, there's going to be any one answer to, to all of this. There's going to be multiple answers. And it's going to be really interesting to see what does help and helps when. Well, what can you say about the trends and patterns you're seeing? Is there anything you can say that uh, anything that surprised you or confirmed what you already thought? Like, you know, are you able to talk about that at all? I, I think it's kind of uh, premature for us to come to, to any c conclusions. It, it's been really neat. We, we've kind of, as we're perfecting this model, we really slow walked it. We took very small groups of beta testers through it at a time. And now that we've, we've released it and, and we still, we're still kind of slow walking, but we've got an audience of a certain size. Uh, you know, progress had been glacial and, and things are really starting to move. Uh, there, there are uh, particular technologies that right now are kind of in the lead. Right? I think we've seen some great stuff with binaural beats, but I don't feel we've analyzed it enough to really see what the trends are. Mm. As opposed and to, say, like isochronic tones or some of the other technologies. Yeah, it's interesting. We've seen particular tracks that a lot of people agree are great, in, in even more than I might have expected. Well, also, too, uh, are people, again, are people playing music in their head all night or does it shut off after they fall asleep or after a prescribed amount of time? Like, how do people tend to use it or how does the system work? Uh, that That is by personal preference. So the, the app is now available on the App Store, uh, pretty much all of the App Store. So Apple, uh, Google Play and Amazon uh, for download. Uh, for anybody to use, and it's free, so so please go and just do it now. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it um, what we've seen is that it it really seems to uh, people like it. They're they're listening to it um, various times, um, and uh, you can set a timer if you wanted to. Um, I have not yet compiled the numbers to see uh, to see what people what people's preferences are, but we we will have it available at some point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it actually just launched on Monday, so uh, we mm -hmm. are two days in. <laughs> well, the reason why I bring it up is that um, music that helps me fall asleep faster may may not that may not mean I sleep better. And here's the here's the reason why. Like you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe I like my REM sleep is is fragmented for some reason for whatever physical reason I have. So I what if concur, I had and sleep phones? You know, what, what if I had sleep phones that starts out a certain way, I fall asleep, and then when it somehow senses I get to the REM stages, or maybe just throughout my whole sleep, for some reason, the music that plays just preferentially helps me have more REM sleep, which for me helps me better. Maybe there's... I, I absolutely concur, yeah. and that that's why at this phase of the, the project, we have quite intentionally designed to to make it a subjective thing. We're letting... A, we're, we're, we're letting it be a little fuzzy. We're letting people make their own determination rather mm. than trying to impose what is good sleep and what is bad sleep. That's good. Yeah. I think it'll be there's a lot to know. I mean, that's one of the things. You, about, yeah. Yeah. I bet you that, that if you go deep enough into it, that certain tracks uh, maybe played at certain times and not played at other times will help more deep sleep. Certain ones may stimulate REM sleep. I mean, certain ones may ease wakening. There's a lot you can do with the whole sleep architecture in the night. You know, I mean, there's you can make people fall asleep faster. You can make them wake up easier. You could, again, modulate their deep and REM sleep, possibly all with audio, which would be pretty cool. 
Yeah. And that, you know, rather than, I think there are a lot of sleep trackers that kind of, yeah, I do impose what, what, you know, a particular framework of what good sleep is. And, and I think uh, as we're letting, you know, we're looking at what, what people, how people actually uh, respond to the tracks. We're going to learn that. And I think, I think we'll have a lot of data to analyze over the long term. I'm just glad you guys are interested in doing it. That's great. And you don't want to just impose some regime on people. So I'm glad to hear that, you know, because uh, again, the more personalized you make it, and the more control people have over their own fate, you know, when sleeping and uh, the happier they'll be. Yeah. And maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what the best sleep for me is. And maybe this will help me find out. Yeah. And, you know, some people are into lucid dreaming as well. And for that, it would be a whole different set of criteria for those people. And so uh, to me as a doctor, uh, I know I've seen so many variations between people. Some people were respond to one drug one way and another person completely the opposite way. And so you really can't predict sometimes. And I feel like Instead of me telling the patient what's good for them, they need to be telling me what's good for them. And so um, one of the, the key measures, I think, is for the, the customer to, or, or the user, the listener, to, um, to rate how, how energetic they are. You know, it's not, oh, I think I fell asleep in 10 minutes, you know, versus 30 minutes. That's not necessarily the best measure. The best measure is how uh, how good do you feel the next day? You know, are you having sustained energy throughout the day? Are you tired? Uh, and any problems like that? Yeah, right. There's a lot of metrics by which someone could say they uh, they feel better <clears throat> or yeah. they had the sleep that they wanted. Which makes a lot of sense. I got you. We're doing our bit oh, to uh, to maybe catch people before they resort to drugs. You know, more and more. Yeah, sleeping pills, et cetera. Yeah, well, that's great. So what what are some uh, happy milestones you're you're looking to achieve over the next you know six months or a year? I I like uh, every time we have a baby boom, you know we get to a certain point and all of a sudden a, a lot of new creatures are born and, and we're trying to figure out exactly you know what what causes that and why right every time we have a new generation I'm excited. Okay, um, so where uh, I see by your websites and everything you've like uh, I don't know either you're really good at promotion or. Uh, you know, a lot of outlets are really loving the uh, the sleep phones or both. What do you, what do you think uh, has led to your success so far? You know, um, this is not something that we're out there pushing on people. I feel like if it helps people, great. They should buy it. You know, if if they and they should know about it, um, so that it's an it's a better option than sleeping pills, for example. Uh, we're we're not really trying to. Uh, be like slimy salespeople and, and tell people, you know, to, to get something that they don't really need. We want them to want it and, and they need to be happy when they own it. That That's kind of our right. goal. It, it, it's to help people sleep better. So, you know, um, I think that we, we don't <laughs> like seed anything. I, I know that there are people out there on Amazon, for example, that will pay for reviews. We don't do any of that kind of uh, black hat stuff. We, want every, that. Everything want is, <laughs> yeah, everything is legitimate. Um, I, you know, if people like it, they like it, and all the reviews are honest. Yeah, you know, we got a yeah, sense early on. You know, this is it's just something that that people were looking for. Whether they, I don't know how they discovered it, but yeah, I mean, you know, we we had fine careers before we got into this. <laughs> Right, 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 I was a doctor. Right. I would have been fine. You know, we we would have been we would have quite been good. Yeah. yeah, quite comfortable. But um, it it was really that the demand uh for sleep phones was so high, and uh we felt like there was an obligation for us. Like this product um became something that we didn't quite expect uh for our day jobs, and and it became more of a calling because um you know my goal has always been to to help people and i know jason's one of his goals was to help bring jobs to the erie area uh, which is a economically depressed uh, rust belt kind of a city and right. and so we combine these goals um and now i'm feeling like i'm helping more people than i ever could have as a doctor and jason's brought you know 20 something jobs uh to the erie area and at this point we've also brought artificial intelligence to Erie. So we're, you know, these are the types of things that we're proud of. It's a start. It's a start. Yeah, that's great. Any any um, interesting feedback you've gotten from users that surprised you guys? Huh. 
I mean, besides like we love it, it's great, I'm sleeping better, all that. Any, uh, I don't know, anything that really piqued your interest that you've heard from users that, that was surprising to you? Or if not, and it's been just, you know, mostly positive, that's great. I just always like to ask questions like that, you know? We, I, I don't I don't know if I can say, I mean, we've had people with particular medical conditions that, that just kind of raved about how much it helped them. I, I was kind of surprised. Connections I might not have made. I, you know, yeah, actually. Um, so everything from PTSD to tinnitus and, and things like that. Um, but what surprised me was kind of this new phenomenon called ASMR. Um, and your, your listeners are probably already familiar with it. Those are whisper autonomic. videos. Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the crackling so videos or the... meridian response. Okay. And, and yeah, and and so it, it's a um, type of uh, feeling that you get. Uh, it's kind of a tingling sensation. Uh, it's very relaxing for people. It's kind of, uh, I guess, uh, it's based on a grooming behavior. Uh, is some of the theory like when somebody's really close to you and whispering in your ear or you know touching Ooh. your scalp. Like perhaps uh, yeah, so, some, I, I would say lay people decided that they've discovered a new neurological phenomenon. Right. And uh, mm. around it has sprung this just amazing and varied community of content creators. And just, it's just an incredible form of self-expression. I would say it's this generation's punk, you know, do it yourself, go out and, and make it happen. And, and it's really cool. I'm glad we could be a part of it. And you were saying yeah. that, um, it's almost like a grooming thing with apes, right? <laughs> that, that's what, what you know. Some people have theorized that that you respond to this, like when a hairdresser is working on your hair, because it was some social phenomenon that 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 caused bonding or something historically. Yeah, so so yeah, like the, the primates would pick lice off of each other's heads, and, and so this is kind of <laughs> and, and it, it was a very pleasurable thing. So it would encourage them to do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I wish someone would pick lights off my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, but but what are you saying? Are you saying that people are using ASMR audios to fall asleep to? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh. And, and it, oh. it's become so popular that we decided to come out with a new product called uh, the, the ASMR edition, which has mm. 16 mm. tracks uh, from, from various ASMR artists uh, who are quite famous on YouTube. And um, we've we've commissioned them to do a uh, specific ASMR track that is uh, for sleep induction. And um, there's a wide variety. You know, I listen to them all, and it's it's all really fun. We just collected this great great group of folks to collaborate with. And you know, it's not all about sleep, right? I mean, it's it's to enjoy this sensation and to share it with others. And since we have the most, you know, with extremely comfortable headphones, even outside of sleep, it's still uh, it's still the way to do it. Yeah, it, it, it's called Sleep Phones ASMR Edition. Um, and it is, uh, we funded via Kickstarter um, last month, and we are in production right now, and we expect to get the shipment, uh, everything finished up uh, in a couple weeks, and shipping in September. So it will be on our uh, site live for sale in September. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, see, there's like ASMR Darling and all these people. So, okay. Absolutely. It's funny, I, I, you know, I guess personally, I, I hate whispering, so I don't know if ASMR would work for me, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people like well, it. Well, yeah, so. you know, er, early on, um, we, we were like, hey, you might want to look into ASMR uh, to our newsletter list. And it's funny because uh, an old lady wrote in and she's like, I'm 70 something years old and don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a continuum of response to ASMR. Yeah, it's 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 something. But but like my cousin, um, my cousin listens to it. He he likes dental work for whatever reason. Um, and mm. <laughs> it's but it that's that's how he falls asleep. So to each their own, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So what's the best way that people can uh, you know can try out the uh, the sleep phones and the acoustic sheep? What, what are some resources for them? Yeah, so um, if you want to try out Sleep Phones, then go to sleepphones.com, which is S-L-E-E-P-P-H-O-N-E-S, like sleep and then your, your mobile phone, um, but headphones. Uh, and, then, um, and then the uh, app is called Acoustic Sheep Harmony Project. The Harmony Project. You know, we're asking people to participate and to help us learn. And it's available on the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store, and the Amazon App Store. Okay. 
Well, excellent. Well, uh, guys, I appreciate you coming back on the podcast, and uh, I have a feeling I'll be hearing from you again in X number of months as to the next. Uh, <laughs> always a pleasure. Genetic, yes, yeah. we've always got new things going on. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll have more. We'll, there's always more. <laughs> You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you.